Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Gwen, for introducing me and organizing this uh, webinar. I'm happy to be here and presenting. Uh, I'm not really at the beach that's depicted in the background, but uh, I thought that uh, giving you a glimpse of the Greek summer, it would be nice even if we cannot enjoy it right now. Uh, so, uh, my name is Manolis Terovitis. I'm a researcher. Uh, I work in the broad area of data management. Uh, in the last few years, I've worked a lot uh, on data anonymization techniques and uh, we are heading the development of the Amnesia tool. Uh, I work in Athena Research Center and the tool is developed there. So, uh, on this presentation, I'm going uh, first to briefly present uh, what data anonymization is and what uh, one should expect from it. Um, I, I will tell you a few things about, uh, about the theory behind amnesia and then uh, we're going to have a demo. Uh, so if something is not clear or if you want some details, please write on the Q&A box and I will do my best to uh, provide you more uh, uh, more, more details and uh, explain again whatever is not clear to you. So let me share my screen and um, we should start from here. Okay, and also I will make it. Okay. Well, um, why do we anonymize the data? Um, I think uh, the, the, the general reason is obvious. We want uh, to use data uh, from human activities that uh, contain very valuable information. Uh, I think the COVID pandemic is uh, a very good example uh, for this. Uh, data about how the disease spreads or uh, uh, the networks that are created is very useful to uh, to stop it, to understand it, to contain it. But at the same time, the data uh, that is required is uh, threatening to the private uh, to the to, to the privacy of uh, citizens. And for example, if movement data is uh, are at stake, they can reveal anything from social interaction to political or uh, even sexual preferences. Uh, uh, very very detailed information uh, can be revealed from tracking human activity if it's uh, studied a lot. So data anonymization comes there and uh, tries to do two things at a, uh, at a time. Uh, one thing is to protect the privacy of the user so we cannot recognize a user or make a inferences for a specific person by looking at the anonymized data. I'm going to come back to what means cannot recognize or cannot make inferences. But at the same time, uh, data anonymization produces uh, anonymized data that are as accurately as possible so that uh, data analysis is uh, feasible. Um, I would like, uh, before getting to the details, to stress uh, uh, the difference between uh, data anonymization and pseudo anonymization. Uh, as it is uh, defined in the GDPR and also uh, as it behaves uh, differently in practice. Now, uh, pseudonymization or uh, a naive anonymization that simply uh, replaces direct identifiers like uh, name, social uh, security numbers or uh, any other kind of uh, uh, or, or specific identifier that uh, uh, complete, uh, that clearly describes a person, um, results to pseudo-anonymized uh, pseudo data. This means that uh, uh, if uh, someone can, uh, can make the link uh, again to the original person, everything uh, can be revealed and no, no privacy is really hidden uh, since reverse, en reverse engineering on the data is possible. It is possible, there's no guarantee that a third party cannot use uh, the data to go back to uh, the original person. And this is done in two ways. If they're very naively uh, anonymized, then uh, for example, uh, 
arbitrary identifiers are defined based on the hashing of the original uh, name or social security number. Maybe uh, even in a mathematical way, we can go back. But uh, the easiest way to uh, go back to the data is by using secondary identif uh, identifiers. That is information that might not be by itself identifiable, but by combining several bits of different information, uh, we can go back uh, and uh, isolate a specific person. Uh, let me give you an example on uh, how this, uh, this works. Um, okay, I'll go first to the example and then go back to pseudonymization. Uh, this is a real example and it was used in the first papers that introduced k-anonymity uh, around the year 2000. And uh, it, it came from the Massachusetts uh, state in uh, USA. And the idea there was uh, the situation actually that uh, for reasons of transparency, hospitals uh, uh, published anonymized records of uh, uh, treatments. Uh, that is, they were saying that uh, uh, they removed the name, they removed the social security number, but they gave publicly all the data that are on the left cycle here, uh, described as medical data, ethnicity, visit date, diagnosis, and so on. Um, at the same time, uh, in the United States, they had uh, public voter catalogs, uh, which did not contain any uh, sensitive information, but they contain the data that's uh, depicted on the right uh, cycle here. If you uh, now, uh, if you look at uh, these two cycles, they intersect on three uh, specific fields, which is the zip code, the date of birth, and the gender of uh, an individual. So, uh, any person could combine these uh, two catalogs based on these uh, secondary identifiers, which we will call quasi-identifiers uh, in the scope of anonymization. And based on the quasi-identifiers, they were able to link the treatment data from the, from the hospitals to the uh, identity of the person from the voters catalog. And actually proved that statistically, uh, like I think it was 87% of uh, uh, US citizens were unique based on uh, their date of birth and zip code. So by using these two bits of information, the zip code and the birth date, which are not directly direct identifiers for a person, you could reverse engineer the pseudonymization and get the, uh, the identity of a person. Now, the GDPR, this discussion and these uh, extracts are for the GDPR, uh, makes a strict distinction between pseudonymization and anonymization. Um, it, uh, con it clearly states that pseudonymized data are not anonymous data, they're personal data and you have to take every measure and um, the whole regulation applies to pseudonymized data. Uh, and the, the basic difference uh, that it defines is that pseudonymization is reversible, but uh, anonymization is not. Now, uh, this is not always black and white. There are many uh, intermediate uh, versions of anonymization because an, an, uh, an anonymization technique might not be reversible, but it might allow uh, an adversary to draw, to make some inferences about uh, uh, the, the original person. Inferences could be that uh, uh, a specific patient has an increased probability of uh, uh, having uh, cancer in his medical record. Uh, but uh, GDPR says that anonymization methods, and that's methods like the ones that are uh, provided by amnesia, K-anonymity, KM-anonymity, differential privacy, which give a guarantee that are irreversible, um, produce anonymous data, which are no longer personal data. And this is a, a huge difference on how we treated the data, because if they are anonymized and they are no longer personal data, then the GDPR does not apply on them. We can share them, we can use them uh, for research and every uh, other purpose. So it 
real anonymization, like the one performed by Amnesia, free us from uh, the constraints of uh, GDPR and the constraints about handling uh, personal data. So, I will uh, present the basic uh, guarantees and anonymization methods uh, employed by Amnesia. So, you will have some background before we see the demo. Uh, I don't see any questions yet, so we're fine. Um, the first uh, guarantee that was uh, uh, proposed for uh, anonymous data was k-anonymity. And what does k-anonymity do? It, uh, it transform, uh, with k-anonymity, we transform the data uh, to a more abstract form where uh, the record of each person is indistinguishable from the record of uh, other K minus one persons. Basically, we hide each individual in a group of K individuals. Uh, the most popular methods for doing this is uh, suppression and generalization. Suppression is the removal of values, we remove outliers. And generalization is uh, the replacement of specific values with uh, more abstract ones. Uh, for example, in this example here, uh, the exact age has been replaced by an age category, less than 30, more than 40, between 30 and 40, right? These are the three categories on age here. And for zip code, the uh, last digits are removed and this removes the accuracy uh, in the definition of the administrative uh, region that's described in the zip code. Zip codes actually have an internal structure where it's, each digit defines uh, uh, different information, usually uh, administrative regions of uh, different sizes. So uh, in, the right, uh, in the rightmost uh, table here, we have a four anonymous uh, data set where even if we know something about uh, a person, we know that John is uh, uh, American and he's uh, 29 years old, uh, and we even know his uh, zip code, uh, we cannot uh, learn which disease uh, he has because when we uh, examine the second, uh, uh, the second table, uh, there are always four candidates. Now, uh, we're not going to get in a lot of details here and it doesn't always come into practice, but uh, it's good to have in mind that uh, canonymity is irreversible, but there are always pitfalls. For example, if, in, uh, if the equivalence groups are small, K is low, then there is a chance that uh, everybody will have the same disease. So even if we cannot recognize the exact record, we can infer that the specific person suffers from, uh, from a specific disease. Now, uh, I'm going to get into some more details on how amnesia achieves uh, k anonymity. Uh, most k anonymity algorithms, uh, all algorithms that are based on generalization, both for k-anonymity and for other guarantees, cell diversity or anything, uh, rely on some instruction on, us, on how to replace specific values with more generic ones, uh, which we call them uh, a generalization hierarchy. Uh, here you see a, a very simple example on uh, uh, how uh, administrative regions, countries, are grouped into larger regions. Uh, and this, uh, this uh, semantic information is given to the algorithm. So if he needs to generalize uh, a value, which is uh, a country, uh, the algorithm will know uh, to which greater region it belongs to and will do iteratively as many generalization as needed uh, as to achieve the desired uh, privacy guarantee. Um, the simplest uh, algorithm and the simplest way to work with the generalization uh, is the following. Uh, we examine all the data and if they are not in groups uh, uh, of size uh, K, let's say that we have a very, a very simple data, right? Where the only quasi-identifier is the location of a person. Then 
uh, we group the locations and if some countries appear less than k times, let's say that k is uh, equal to four, then we go one level up uh, in the generalization hierarchies and now uh, every value of uh, Every, every country is replaced by the most, uh, by a greater region uh, where it belongs. Uh, if now, again, there is uh, not enough, uh, uh, there are groups that are smaller than K, we go one step up and we do one more replacement. Uh, if this is uh, shaped like a, a tree, uh, then there's always a root, so uh, the algorithm converges because uh, in the worst case it will replace everything with a single value and if we have more than k records then we are going to have k anonymity. Of course this is a, a trivial case that guarantees the convergence of the algorithm but uh, would not produce probably useful results. Now we call this global recording and full domain generalization. Global recording means that if a value for example, Greece is replaced in one place in the data set, then it will be replaced everywhere in the data set. There's no chance that we're going to see South Europe and Greece in the same data set. And it's called full domain because we go layer by layer. We do not opt to just to generalize Greece and Italy to South Europe and leave North Europe uh, as Germany and Holland, even if this satisfies the anonymity. This is the simpler uh, version. Uh, it requires the simplest algorithm, and it's also in, and also the result is intuitive because everything is generalized to the same level. Uh, here is an example of uh, an anonymize uh, a two anonymization uh, a two anonymity table on the right. Uh, we want to. Uh, make certain that its uh, record belongs to uh, a, uh, to a group with uh, two uh, with two records. Uh, so the only transformation we can do is, uh, or at least the uh, the one that the algorithm finds, it's the one on the uh, on the rightmost uh, table. Now the drawback uh, here, as you can see in this example, is that the full domain generalization is not very flexible one problem will cause to generalize all values in a layer. Contrary to the full domain and the global recording, we can use what we call local recording. Now here in every different part or every different group, we can uh, do a different anonymous, a different substitution, a different recording of the original uh, values so that we stay as close as possible to the original data and at the same time uh, we provide the required privacy guarantee. As you see, uh, the data here are again too anonymous, but uh, uh, the location information is delivered in different levels of granularity. Uh, in some cases, just the South Europe, uh, in the case of Greece, which uh, had a lot of uh, appearances in this data set, uh, in two cases it, re it remains uh, the same. and. Uh, some values that could not be grouped uh, any better appear just as Europe. Uh, so the gain with uh, local recording is that we preserve information loss uh, better, but the trade-off is that we have more complex algorithms and the data are less intuitive because when you search a location, for example, if you want to make an estimation on how many people uh, live uh, in Greece, uh, then you will uh, have to get all the people that appear living in Greece in the data set, some that appear to be living in South Europe, and even less from those that appear to be living in Europe. So it requires uh, more complex data analytics, but at the same time, the results uh, you will get will be closer to the original. Now, uh, Amnesia uh, supports uh, both methods, and I'm going later to demonstrate them both. Um, an additional, uh, uh, an, an additional advantage of uh, local recording is that uh, it also allows us to process the data uh, uh, in, in partitions. And this uh, greatly improves the scalability of our algorithm. Whereas for uh, the global recording and uh, the full domain generalization, uh, our algorithm uh, 
gets everything to the main memory, so it's limited uh, on the amount of the memory of the uh, server that uh, someone is using for the anonymization. The local recording uh, can process just a part of the data set at its step, so a uh, very large data set can be processed. It takes, uh, it might take a lot of time, but uh, it's doable uh, depending on uh, uh, how much uh, uh, resources you can give to it. So, uh, both these algorithms achieve the same guarantee, which is k-anonymity, uh, but they do follow different uh, uh, ways of transforming the data. Now, I, I would like to uh, also discuss about the KM anonymity and uh, a more complex guarantee that we uh, offer in Amnesia, which is uh, also one of the unique features of Amnesia. The, to my knowledge, there's no other tool uh, that offers uh, KM anonymity. Um, K anonymity works well on simple relational data where you have a limited number of quasi identifiers because it requires that uh, each uh, group has the same number of, uh, the, the, it has uh, exactly identical uh, records with respect to quasi identifiers. This uh, is very problematic when we have uh, high, sparse uh, high dimensional data. For example, um, if we have, if we had, I'm going to directly show to you with, uh, uh, with an example. Uh, this is, uh, let's say that uh, on the topmost table, we have a very simplified log of uh, transactions in a retail store. So we just say that each person, Vasilis, has bought fruits, has bought meat, and has not bought vegetables or fish. Uh, Manolis has bought fruits, meat, and vegetables, but not fish. Um, if we wanted to, if any of these transactions, every product that uh, Vasilis or Manolis brought is a quasi identifier, then if we wanted to produce a two anonymous uh, data set, we would have to, uh, to, to make them identical. So uh, vegetables and not vegetables would have to become one value. Uh, and uh, also since uh, every combination here, uh, every record has a unique combination of uh, products that were bought from possibly a very large domain of different products, then the only solution we would get even for two anonymous is the solution at the Bottom, uh, bottom table uh, that we, we see here. We could only say that each person just bought food because the quasi identifiers uh, have to be identical. Now, if we were a bit more flexible, we could uh, gain a lot more uh, in terms of information quality. And from a privacy point of view, we can afford to be a bit more flexible. For example, think that you go to a supermarket and the supermarket has 20,000 products and you buy like 20 of them. It is not likely that uh, an adversary can monitor uh, whether you bought or not 20,000 products. An adversary would only have uh, partial knowledge, either because he looked at your uh, shopping bag or because he has a loyalty program that tracks few of the products. Uh, of a few products uh, that uh, that were taken in uh, th that you'd put in your shopping bag. So, if we consider if we consider adversaries that have only passing knowledge about uh, their products you bought, they know up to m products uh, that were bought in a single transaction. Then we can offer what we call KM guarantee, which guarantees that every combination of M different products will appear at least K times. So we can offer the more informative table that you see here at the bottom of uh, the screen, where every combination of two quasi identifiers, fruits and meat, fruits and other food, meat and other food, appears at least uh, two times in two different candidates. Uh, note that this combination, uh, this method does not consider negative knowledge. It does not consider that someone, someone did not buy something because we consider this a very weak quasi-identifiers in, uh, in 
real world cases uh, where if you buy 20 products out of 20,000, someone knowing that you didn't buy something, um, it's not very informative, it's not easy to uh, come by to this knowledge. Uh, but it's a lot easier to come by to the knowledge that you actually bought something. So a 2-2 anonymous uh, data set could be uh, the one that you see below and this guarantees that any adversary who knows up to two bits of information from uh, what's in your shopping bag, two quasi identifiers of uh, uh, all quasi identifiers that characterize a person, then he would always have uh, K to here candidates uh, uh, as possible records in the anonymized data set. So, this uh, anonymization method, method is better suited for multidimensional data. That is when you have too many quasi-identifiers and it's very effective when these data are sparse as in many cases where from numerous quasi-identifiers there are only few that, have, uh, that are not, not null, that have some uh, positive value uh, in them. So, um, Okay, I'm not going to uh, discuss uh, now everything about uh, data anonymization and all the challenges. Uh, I'm going to stay just to a few anonymization challenges that we're going to meet with Amnesia and every other tool. And the basic is that there's still not enough experience on how to set uh, the several values that define the strength of a privacy guarantee based on uh, experience. I, the, the, we don't have decades or years of using anonymization methods and we know uh, which settings are dangerous or not. I can only bring forward the practices of uh, the statistical authorities which usually uh, publish data in a category if they're uh, my thing in for uh, the Eurostat it was like uh, five entries in the statistical categories. I think for the Greek authorities, uh, for a smaller country, it was just three entities in its, uh, uh, in its category. Another challenge, okay, I see something in Q&A. Um, okay, I will... Um, uh, I will uh, uh, tell you a few things about KNM. I think this is exactly what uh, I'm answering now. Um, my only uh, direction at this moment is uh, the practice of statistical authority. So uh, a K of uh, uh, five would uh, uh, be in the same lines with uh, uh, what statistical authorities do. Now, them should be uh, an estimation of uh, experts in the field on how, uh, how probable it is for a third person to acquire M parts of uh, a record. So th this is a challenge because it's not a, a technical challenge. It's not something that uh, uh, as technical people who do the algorithms can actually solve. What we can give is uh, freedom and flexibility uh, so that uh, it can be easily adjustable by experts, but uh, it's only experience that actually uh, helps to define KNM. Um, well, um, I will answer one more question that I think it's uh, relevant that since anonymization is not really tested in practice, if we should treat anonymized data as uh, uh, pseudo-anonymous and GDPR to be safe. Um, I would say no, uh, I would say that we should treat them as anonymized, not as pseudo-anonymized. Maybe we should take, um, excuse me, maybe we should take some small steps uh, use anonymized data and share them only with a control audience or start by sharing um, only, uh, a small uh, only a small part of the, our data. But the guarantees are there and they are 
and the guarantees provided by anonymization methods, even the simplest ones, even the weakest ones, are a lot stronger than what is done now in practice for anonymizing data. Um, there's no, there are no years of experience with these kinds of methods, but there are some years of experience with other methods like uh, what the statistical authorities do or what uh, the uh, HIPAA rules do in the United States. Uh, the United States have some rules for uh, providing an anonymous data, which are pseudo-anonymous based on uh, the GDPR. And uh, there are fixed rules saying that, you know, from zip code, you can only publish the first three digits, or if you want to publish the, the birth date of a person, you only publish uh, the year or the decade. There are these kind of rules. And after years of practice, uh, they do not have very important problems with this kind of methods. So if we use as a point of reference the existing methods and we're certain that the methods we provide for anonymizing data, which are formal, are a step forward, I think we have taken what the GDPR says, all reasonable measures to guarantee the anonymity. Because uh, GDPR has this word also that they cannot be reversed in a reasonable, uh, by spending reasonable resources. So if you use state of the art, you know it's better than the older practice. I think you can show the conformity uh, to GDPR. Okay, one more question that's uh, based on uh, uh, where anonymization fits. Uh, I am asked uh, whether if we have efficient access control, if it is, uh, if we don't need anonymization. And I would say that they are complementary. Uh, access control uh, gives full access to people that you trust to get all the information. Uh, but the idea of, of anonymization is to give the useful information to people that you do not trust. That, uh, for example, uh, with COVID, uh, you might want to share all movement data so researchers everywhere can use them. Uh, and you want to give a wide uh, to a wide audience where you cannot do any efficient co uh, access control on who gets it or you don't want uh, them to get it uh, uh, anyway. Uh, so, um, the, uh, so anonymization comes there. When you don't, do not trust the recipient uh, to treat personal data, uh, but we also want to give uh, the useful information for other purposes like scientific or marketing research. So uh, access control and anonymization are different, uh, have di different co uh, goals. Um, also the GDPR says that you, you, only, you have to give uh, as less personal information as needed. So if somebody wants to do uh, a scientific uh, to draw scientific results or do a marketing research, she or he do not need to know the information that lies, uh, the personal information, the data. They just want to know correlations and patterns. So by anonymization, you try to, re to remove the personal information and just leave there the correlation and the patterns. Um, okay, what time is it? I want to continue with the questions, but okay, I think we have time. Um, another question is uh, that uh, uh, is how, how uh, an, uh, a data owner that preserves the original data uh, can anonymize the data, uh, can actually produce anonymous data since the original data always allows him to reverse engineer the data. Um, this is not the case. If we, if we do replace and randomize the positions, which is uh, trivial, uh, if we do replace the quasi identifiers by a modern negative value, we cannot go back even in the original data. And of course, uh, the data owner does not need to go back. Also the GDPR, when it says about reversibility, uh, it does not refer to the data owner. The data owner who has the original data does not really need 
to do any reverse engineering. It has the original data. It refers to an attacker, and an attacker uh, cannot reverse engineer uh, data that have been anonymized formally, and there's a statistical guarantee about uh, what can be, uh, which records can be isolated or not. Okay, one question that I'm not said enough uh, completely understood, uh, it's by Judith, so uh, please uh, uh, send more if I'm not answering. If I understand well, is uh, uh, how, how, do, uh, how can we use uh, these anonymization algorithms to anonymize data that are collected incrementally and the world will get more? Um, you cannot. You cannot really make a guarantee between different uh, b between data that are updated. If you anonymize uh, a data set and you give it out publicly, and then you put 10% uh, additional records in the same data set and you anonymize it again in a different way and you give it out publicly, then there's no guarantee that somebody can use both versions of the data uh, to uh, get something more than what you guarantee. And this is an inherent problem of uh, almost all data anonymization techniques. It's not a problem of amnesia, it's a problem of uh, canonymity, diversity, closeness, and even differential privacy. Differential privacy uh, offers us uh, the option to estimate the uh, possible information leakage since uh, it just doubles the privacy budget when you uh, anonymize twice uh, the same data. But in general, updates are very problematic. The correct way to do it, if you have, uh, let's say 100 records and you get 10 more is, uh, and you have published anonymously, uh, the 100 records in the past is to anonymize separately the 10 new records and publish them and do not re-anonymize the original 100. This way it would be safe because the two data sets would be different uh, and disjoint. Um, about, uh, uh, about having a portable or browsable version of Amnesia, uh, we do have an online version of Amnesia, but, uh, and you can find it on our site, which is amnesia.openair.eu. But we do not consider it, uh, we consider it most, uh, suitable mostly for demo and training purposes, because then to use the online version, your data have to leave your premises, go to the server, get anonymized there, and then uh, you get them back. So this is not a good practice. Uh, but uh, as a portable, Yes, this, uh, okay, this is not portable, you install it, but we can, since it's simple Java, we can make it portable without uh, needing installation, uh, uh, without needing an installation uh, on uh, the local computer. And thanks for the comment, I will keep this in mind. Okay. Um, about uh, the tool storing the data. I think partly it was covered before. Uh, the tool uh, re reads the data, uh, if you download it, which is the safest practice, then it reads the data from your local disk. So it is the user who has stored the data. Then the data are only used in main memory and the anonymized file is written uh, again locally. Now, if you use the online version, then they're stored for a short while on the server. And that's why we do not uh, uh, pr uh, propose to use the online version for, uh, uh, for, for, re for real anonymization. It's mostly for training and demo. If you want to anonymize sensitive data, I would recommend to everyone to download Amnesia locally and use it locally. Also, it's uh, also a matter of uh, computing resources, the online version cannot really anonymize very big data because uh, amnesia, anonymization is an expensive uh, procedure. Uh, 
similar to data mining, so we do not have uh, that good uh, resources in the online version to work for many users on the same time and for large data sets. Um, we do not do data, uh, we do not do anonymization on completely unstructured information. Um, we only work on uh, Excel tables or semi-structured information with uh, the set values. And I think I will uh, very quickly show you now the demo. Um, we cannot, as we cannot anonymize uh, unstructured data, we cannot also anonymize qualitative data. I mean, uh, and if they're uh, unstructured like interview transcripts, uh, we can only anonymize features that have been coded as uh, tables or object relational tables, which are a bit less uh, strict. Uh, the link for Amnesia is, sorry, I thought I had it on the proposal, on the description. So, I think I will stop answering these questions here. Uh, actually, I'm not on uh, on a clock, so I can spend more time answering them. But I would like uh, to have a demo uh, inside the the, the designated uh, time period for th this webinar. So let me share. If you sorry to interrupt, you can go over time afterwards. So if you want to uh, first get a demo and then, then you can, uh, if there's some more questions you want to answer, it's no problem if people want to stay. Okay, thanks. That's what I had in mind. So for everyone who does not have enough time, we'll have a demo. Okay, this is Amnesia and actually, okay, now you all see uh, the first, uh, page of Amnesia. Uh, obviously, the first thing we have to do is to upload the data set. So we choose a data set which I have already cho uh, chosen in the past. And uh, as the first thing, we're going to see how we can do uh, simple, uh, simple anonymization. This is a uh, uh, simple anonymity. Uh, this is more or less uh, an Excel-like import wizard where we take delimited files, we define the delimiter for every field. Amnesia guesses the type of the data, but it might not be uh, correct, so uh, the user has to correct this. Um, and here we can choose which uh, data participate will participate on the output data set. So we remove the direct identifiers. These are synthetic data similar to health data in the UK based on uh, some original data we had access to. So uh, I'm going to leave uh, the date of birth, the marital status, and the diagnosis codes as quasi, uh, quasi identifiers. And I'm going just to do simple uh, anonymity. So we have to uh, create hierarchies. Now, uh, hierarchies are uh, text files uh, for some that can be created either through the tool or manually. And um, they just show how we generalize its value. This is a hierarchy that has been created in the past and I'm just reloading it. And Amnesia helps us also to auto-generate hierarchies. Uh, this is uh, quite useful when we have continuous domains like the date of birth. So dates are the most complex ones. And what I have to give is a name for this hierarchy. Uh, Amnesia reads the data set and decides what's the lowest and the biggest uh, value. Uh, the way it depicts the dates here are the years. 1930-1989. It's uh, just the Java description that's chosen here. And uh, because dates are not uh, on the decimal system, but we count them on days, on months, on years, um, 
we have to, in Stack Amnesia, how to uh, define periods in terms of years. Uh, how to define it in terms of months, in terms of dates, and then how the five-year periods will be grouped to higher level instances. So by doing this, we get a hierarchy over dates. When we want to generate hierarchy over strings then, uh, or distinct values, then Amnesia does not know how to do it. It can only allow us to do a sorting alphabetical or not alphabetical. Uh, and here, uh, we're going to see the, the, uh, the first big problem of uh, simple k anonymity with more complex data. Now it assigns random names and at the bottom it has combinations, uh, values of the, first, uh, of the first row of our data, which if you want to see again, it was like this. If this is a collection, this is actually a set of different ICD codes. ICD codes are uh, diagnosis codes for patients. Each of these uh, uh, codes means that uh, a patient uh, has been diagnosed with uh, a different uh, uh, disease. Uh, but if we store them like this in a simple table that's not object relational, then each collection of uh, codes is, tr is treated like a different string. So when we go to the algorithms, we have to uh, in Stack Amnesia, which uh, hierarchy should use with uh, which attribute? We give a value for k and we execute the anonymization algorithm. Now, I'm going to zoom in. The anonymization algorithm for k anonymity gives us this uh, very complex latex, uh, uh, lattice. The numbers here, uh, remember what three quas identifiers. Each node shows a different state of uh, generalizing the quas identifiers. Here, uh, the first quas identifiers has been generalized three times. The second one has been generalized three times and the last one none. And the data looks like this. And also, uh, Uh, it's 13% of the data that uh, do not fall in some group of, uh, of size of, of five, right? We had k anonymity equal to five. Now, red nodes uh, depict uh, solutions, generalizations that do not produce k anonymity. Blue nodes produce uh, so valid solutions, that is, solutions that do produce a k anonymous data set. Uh, and see this k anonymous data set. The marital status has been uh, has not been altered at all. The date of birth has been uh, has uh, been replaced by 25 year periods, and the diagnosis codes have been totally erased because they are all different. Uh, because the combination of the individual diagnosis codes is different for every person, and k anonymity requires that they are identical. So. Just by pressing this, we apply this anonymization solution and we can save locally the anonymized data. Uh, another option would be to examine a, a solution that's not valid, that does not produce k anonymity. I'm sorry, that's. Okay, this is not a good example. Let me see. Okay, I will go back to this one. Uh, this one says that 13% of the values do not adhere to uh, k anonymity. Now, instead of generalizing more the data, I could choose to suppress the, uh, to 
to just delete the 13% of the data set. In other examples, this could be very small. It could be less than 1%. And then get an anonymized solution where now we have preserved uh, the date of birth more accurately instead of having 25 year periods, we have five year per periods, but we have lost 30% of uh, the original records. And this is a trade-off that's, uh, uh, that, that's decided by the data curator. Okay, let me see your questions. Okay, to anonymize an Excel file, you just have to save the Excel file as a comma delimited file, which is a simpler, uh, a simpler format. And then uh, uh, you can uh, uh, just upload the data uh, on uh, Amnesia and uh, define the, uh, the, the delimiter. Uh, we do have uh, a small data set on our uh, web, uh, web page and we will, um, upload a more complete uh, example uh, over the, the next period so you can have more options on, uh, for training. And uh, again, the discussion about how we choose K, I think we've answered this uh, before. It's based on experience and uh, values of uh, K of uh, three or five are in line with what statistical authorities do about publishing data for different uh, groups. So, um, okay, we have five minutes here. So I'm going to show you uh, the KM anonymity choice. So I'm going to restart. I'm going to load again the same data set. the same delimiter, but this time I'm telling Amnesia that this is not a simple table. Uh, it's a table with a set valued attribute. Those that are familiar with computer science, uh, this is an object relational table. And actually what we're saying to Amnesia is that one of the fields is not a simple field. It has a set of different values, which are an arbitrary number of, of, of these values. So it has more flexibility on the, data, uh, on the data structure it uses to model the data. And now we have to give a second delimiter. The first delimiter defines the different fields, which is the comma here. And uh, the second delimiter defines different values inside a field. So Amnesia has guessed that this is a set and it's actually a set of different ICD codes. I'm going to remove these uh, things and actually just to have a simple example, I'm only going to keep the marital status. And now I get this data set. I have a predefined hierarchy for uh, the ICD code, which is uh, an ontology of uh, diagnosis used uh, globally. And I'm going to use the same hierarchy for marriage. I'm going again to let the algorithm know which uh, uh, hierarchy should use with uh, which uh, quasi identifier. But now the algorithm, will, but now what we're going to do is provide KM anonymity. That will, and this is the way we treat uh, set values. And, uh, adver and an adversary that knows up to, let's say two values, will not be able to identify less than, uh, sorry, at 50, less than five records. Uh, I'm going to show you what it means. Uh, now, this is the anonymized data, and we have gone up to the uh, diagnosis hierarchy, but there's useful information here and we have sacrificed the marital status. Now, KM anonymity uh, is more expensive, is a more expensive algorithm, so it does not, the algorithm auto chooses uh, a good solution without offering us all the options that simply anonymity offered us. 
Uh, now, what is the guarantee here? That anyone who knows two values, that could be two ICD codes or one ICD code and the marital status of a person will not be able to identify uh, less than K records. Uh, the way the algorithm did it is it actually removed the marital status and it reduced the number of diagnosis codes. And if you remember for K anonymity, we had to completely sacrifice the most useful information here, which was the ICD codes, because each combination was unique. Now, you know, the patient here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different diagnoses. The, if we wanted to have a K anonymous data set, we would have to find other four people which would have the same eight uh, diagnoses. So uh, this is infeasible and uh, we have to, to destroy it all. And also it's pointless. If, I, if an adversary already knows uh, five, eight ICD codes about the, uh, the health condition of a person, then probably there's not much to hide. Uh, what's most important is to protect about someone who just knows a part of your health condition. So here the part is uh, two cousin identifiers, two diagnosis codes or a diagnosis code and the marital, and the marital status. Okay, let me check the questions again. Um, we had uh, only very small video tutorials. Uh, I will, uh, and I will uh, upload more and uh, now you will have this, uh, uh, this webinar and the other webinars, but uh, I'm going to upload uh, to create a few and ask for some time for that, that will do more specific jobs, how to uh, create a new hierarchy or they will explain some uh, more details. Uh, access to amnesia is via the open air portal. Okay, and since I see that we have uh, a little more time, then I'm going to show you the last algorithm we have in amnesia, which is, uh, which offers K anonymity uh, but it does local recording and uh, it is disk based. So it scales a lot better and offers better quality on the result. Now, to simplify things, I'm going to use just the date of birth and the marital status for this. Um, I'm going to proceed to hierarchies. I'm going to generate a hierarchy for the date of birth again. I could have saved the previous one and reused it, but uh, yeah, I just didn't do it. So I'm going to show you again. Okay, this is the date hierarchy and I'm going to as the date of birth, marital status, I'm choosing K equal to five and I'm running the algorithm. Again, here, there are not, not many options. The algorithm directly chooses uh, the, best, uh, the best solution it finds. But I want you here to notice uh, the first three values. Now, <coughs> in the global recording, uh, now here we, we do not know the original age. It was a number between 30 and 49. Now, if we had global recording, all numbers between 30 and 49, if they were replaced, they would be replaced by exactly uh, the same more generic category. But here we see that a number here has been replaced by this uh, range, but another number that might be in the same place has been replaced on this, uh, by this range. And another one which overlaps by the previous has been replaced by this uh, range. So we have many ranges that uh, are in different granularity levels and that uh, actually overlap uh, between them because now the algorithm splits the, the data in smaller parts and in each part it tries to find the best solution uh, for this part. This is, make, is making it at the same time more scalable but it 
can get more accurate estimations about uh, the original data and the distribution of uh, the age of uh, each person in the original data. Let me see the Q&A. Okay. I don't see any, any more questions. Oh, sorry, I have not pressed them. Okay, um, I think this is all for me for showing you uh, how much, uh, how does amnesia works overall uh, in the overall. Understand for your questions and I note that uh, we need to publish more training material and this is our goal actually for uh, the next uh, month and uh, at the rest of the June and in July we're going to publish uh, more material uh, in the uh, more material uh, in the uh, in the website and also in YouTube videos. Also, uh, the last uh, the last question about uh, when we upload the file, uh, I'm going to change the upload uh, uh, description because it's not an actually upload; it's just a loading of the file, uh, and the file is loaded. To if you have locally uh, your uh, if you have locally installed Amnesia, then the file is just loaded in main memory. Or if you use the disk-based method, uh, it's just a part of it that's uh, used in uh, in the main memory. It doesn't go anywhere, and you can use uh, locally Amnesia without any connection to the internet. So when you use it locally, it's completely safe. Nothing goes off your computer. If you use it as a, a service from our server, then it's loaded. Um, uh, it's loaded uh, on the. Uh, it's loaded on the server. Um, so uh, there, it is saved for a small period of time. So I would not recommend using the online service for anything more than training or demonstrating uh, how the, uh, the tool works. Uh, if you want to use it, use it locally. Um, as for statistics for using uh, this tool, we only have statistics from the web page, which shows, I think, uh, in the previous year it was uh, okay, it was uh, more than a thousand that used the online service and like uh, two, three hundred that downloaded and installed it, which was, I think, the first year that actually uh, we had some. We gave it in a more mature form. Uh, I see every day the interest to grow, but since we do not have yet, uh, we plan to do it any kind of paid subscription or, or support. Uh, we do not know how many would actually buy it and use it on uh, uh, on real data. Since we do not track anything, when you download Amnesia, we do not know how the people use it. Okay. Okay, so uh, I hope I gave you a good understanding of Amnesia Works. Uh, please do not uh, hesitate to contact me uh, if you want uh, any help with uh, using it or you have any comments or anything that you would like to see, something that doesn't work well. Uh, we're actively developing it and we will, and since this is a new field, both for the developers and the users, we want to be certain that we're going to cover every need. Also, if you want to use it on a real world case, would much uh, like to have uh, feedback on that. Thanks a lot, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, Manolis, for taking the time to demonstrate this. I think it was very useful. Um, everybody, um, so already this link to the slides is available via the open air um, webinar pages and I will put the recordings there uh, in a couple of hours. So um, if you have time, please fill in the evaluation form. Um, please, uh, we will not send an additional email uh, to notify you of the, the availability of the recordings and the slides, just so you know. You will just, uh, you just have to check the page later this evening and it will be there. Uh, and Manolis, did you provide your email address at the end of your presentation? 
I think uh, I had it in uh, the presentation in the first slide. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. So if you want to contact Manolis directly uh, related to this webinar, you can, you can find his email address there. If you have any general questions about the webinars, uh, or if you have a question you want me to pass on to Manolis, just use the uh, webinars at openair.eu address. Uh, thank you very much for attending, and um, uh, I hope to see you soon in another uh, and another webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.